whenever somebody develops a truly novel, something brand new that's totally not been seen before, that's real innovative, we have to work our way through the really crappy stages of that before we get to something that's useful. So as we, we look at changes happening around the world, we have to look in terms of exponential growth because things are changing so quickly. So as an example, the solar power industry is doubling its output every two years. So even though the total amount of power generated by solar is still very small, it's only 2% of the total amount of power generated for the world, within 12 years, with the exponential growth pattern, it will actually dominate the world as far as uh, generating power. So as we transition from physical products to digital products, the growth curve starts to take on this exponential growth pattern. We're switching from physical cars to digital cars. And by the way, if somebody owns a Tesla car, um, Tesla offers a free download every month to upgrade your car. So part of their sales pitch is that if after a year, you actually own a better car than when you first bought it. We're moving from physical homes to smart homes. We're moving from physical cities to smart cities. So as digital technology enters our lives in a bigger way, the changes will start happening ex exponentially faster. To give you an example of rapid scalability, I'll, I'll go through this list here, but McDonald's, it took them 23 years to sell the first billion hamburgers. Facebook, it took them eight and a half years to reach the first billion users. It took Uber five and a half years to sell the first billion rides on Uber. Uber has a competitor in China called Didi Kawadi, and it only took them 11 months to reach the first billion rides. Now, he was the first one, and this is in 2012. Since then, there's been 21 YouTube stars that have exceeded a billion downloads, with uh, the new record being set by Adele in just 87 days. So this idea is really important because if you're in business, you can have a competitor come out of the woodwork and in, in maybe two or three weeks, they can already have 10 million users and be a fierce competitor. So on one hand, we're eliminating lots of jobs, but on the other hand, we're freeing up human capital. So just because our jobs disappear doesn't mean we run out of work to do in the world. Um, that's fairly ludicrous. I mean, there's lots of work left to do in the world. So even though there's lots of work left to do in the world, we may not have jobs lined up for the work that needs to be done. So we're going to have some gaps, and that creates challenges. What's changing is that we can now think faster, know faster, and do faster than ever before in history. So where will our next generation jobs come from? Well, the answer is they will come from future industries. So I'm just going to touch real quick on some of the future industries, including the Internet of Things, the trillion sensor movement, 3D printing, contour crafting, virtual reality, flying drones, driverless cars, and micro colleges. Let's start with the Internet of Things. Uh, the Internet of Things is uh, permeating virtually every aspect of life as we build a digital infrastructure over everything physical in the world. The Internet of Things started somewhere between 2008 and 2009. That's when the company Cisco actually noticed that the number of devices connected to the Internet started to exceed the number of people on Earth. 6.8 billion people, 6.8 billion devices. The projections are that we're going to reach 50 billion things connected to the Internet by 2020. So we're asking a lot of what are all these things. In addition to being, things being connected to the Internet, there's lots of sensors being created. And uh, three years ago, there was an event called the Trillion Sensor Summit that was held in San Francisco. At this event, they were putting together a roadmap as to how long it would take before we get to a trillion sensors in the world. And they concluded it would be somewhere between 2022 and 2024. And by 2036, we will have 100 trillion sensors in the world. So right now, the number of sensors on smartphones is somewhere between 19 and 20. And when smartphones first came out, they only had five. So the, the number of sensors on smartphones is doubling every four years. So this means that within uh, 12 years, 
that we will have 160 sensors on every smartphone and that with 3 billion smartphones projected to be sold on an annual basis, that means we're going to have 480 billion sensors being sold on an annual basis starting uh, just 12 years from now. So as a result of all of this work, innovation is being parsed into far smaller pieces. That means that every one of us can participate in creating the future. There's a category of changes with the Internet of Things called enchanted objects, and these are things that have kind of magical properties. I'll just mention a few of these. Uh, the first one is the Amazon trash can. So when you throw something away in this trash can, it automatically scans the item and it reorders it from Amazon. The MemoMe smart mirror actually remembers what you wore in the last outfit you tried on so you can compare outfits from one to the next. The Vitality Glow Cap is one that will alert you when it's time to take your medicine. So it will first alert you by flashing a light at the top and if you don't take your pills then it will actually start uh, beeping and if you still don't take your pills it'll start sending you text messages. The Biometric Coffee Maker is a very smart device. You put your hand on it and it knows exactly how much caffeine should go in your coffee. The Flying Nixie camera looks like just a device on your, like a watch, but all you have to do is unlatch it and it folds out into a flying drone and then you throw it and it uh, suddenly you can throw it and it goes out like a frisbee and spies on your neighbors. And the Pinto P Feed Pet Feeder is designed so that when you're feeding your pets at home, that you can FaceTime them and talk to them while they're eating. 